two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight. And then was laying nine on its own on, on the end for Charlie Goss's personal use with the ball return on the right hand side. And then there were two push doors open. Uh, sort of fire escape. A, a fire right. escape. And Into the north so some, a few times people fell on the ball return, pushed all the balls out, and they'd just plop over and <laughs> half a dozen at a time into the sea. <laughs> I can remember that happened two or three they times. Turned up on front of the beach. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy, happy they don't flow, do they? No. But yeah, it was happy times. What else do you remember? What else came up in the book? Silly stories or things that made you laugh? Oh, I think everyone's got a story, haven't they? I think I'd better be keep calm. <laughs> <laughs> I think well, probably one of our stories is when we're travelling away. Yeah, that was pretty horrendous, well, a lot of it. We, after <coughs> we leave, probably in the week, we'd be bowling somewhere away, we'd try and organise it, and then we'd pick people up, and then we had one of our drivers, Martin, Martin Green. <laughs> Madman. He was here. He if, 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 if it was a two hour journey, he'd get there. 40 hour. minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes. How far two hours bring mine? And, or do that in 40 and minutes. And we'd have a cooked breakfast on the way as and well. And he would do it as well. It, it scared the life out of me. But it, it, he was a fanta it's fantastic driver. Yeah. Uh, but, but if you're not yeah. used to that sort of driving, coming up to a roundabout at 70 <laughs> miles an hour and not really changing gear. and But there was a lot of commitment, <laughs> wasn't it, for all the guys? Yeah. For that weekend, uh, you're out of the way or whatever, but mm. we were helping. Every, every weekend had a different story, because yeah. we'd always stop for, oh, the, the burger van outside, at Chelmsford, yeah. outside the um, cottage. That. that was iconic. Was it, was, it, it was a minivan, yeah. but it had a, a, a canopy, so you could stand up in the back of this, and the burgers, the most fantastic burgers. And I think he was probably there up until about, 15 years ago or something like that because I always used to say well did you stop at the burger van on the way out yeah. and that would be like 3 in the morning he'd still be there at 3 in the morning crazy time yeah. I, I don't know we got back Monday and then go to work and then we I don't know how we got again. back <laughs> to be honest half the time and then we do it again I remember my mum saying that she was so nervous when the first night she started working because obviously she'd never done anything like that before it was completely new and one of the things she had to do was to give people the loan shoes so you swap your street shoes for the, the bowling shoes she had to spray this sort of antibacterial spray into the, uh, into the shoes obviously to stop con con cross contamination she was so nervous, she sprayed people in the face. <laughs> so they'd go, ah, she was meant to be pointing it at the... At because the, the reception street. desk was really quite high up. I mean, when we were juniors, we could just about peer over the top of the reception. So someone standing up there was quite a, quite a lauding sort of figure. And, um, and the man, man with times the bowling shoes were taken home, and all what we were left with was this smelly old flip-flop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Where they gone? Off they went with them. So who was it that threw their ball over the edge of the... Chaz Winter. What Christmas. happened? Well, he had such a bad night that he said, I've had enough of this. He said, that's enough. Yeah. So he went outside and through it. over it went. And it washed up on Frinton yeah. Beach yeah. two days later. Yeah. Couldn't get rid of I it. I think it might have... We knew who it was. I think it had his initials in there anyway, because <laughs> then those days you could put initials yes. on your bowling ball. Yeah, you? you could. I think it was Chaz, I think he used to have. He did, yeah. Well, you could have your own initial character. Mm -hmm. um, did you use the rest of the pier very much, or was it very much you walked straight through to go to the alley? Uh, well, for me, I didn't the, use the well, rest of the pier. I used to right? use the arcade until I got chucked out of the arcade and was told, look, you get banned from the pier or you go up the bowling alley and start bowling. And that's where all I started. Mm. But I still, still used, well, I still I think I was working outside on the rides. The pier oh. tended to shut down in sort of September, October, right? yeah, when the school was the season. And yeah. then it didn't really open until Easter. So in that period, the bowling alley was only a bit open. The empty pier, which was a bit eerie because normally mm. there's lots of yeah. noise and children and it's all summer. And so in the winter, you'd, be, you'd go through all this empty kind of arcade and rides and then into the brightly lit Tempin bowling and it would be a place that would be heaving and humming mm. with life. And then, would you play when there were storms on and stuff? Yeah, it was quite, it was um, quite, I played, there. Scary I played there when you heard the water underneath. You could hear, so, hear yeah. the waves hitting underneath, um, 
during, uh, well, I remember the storm of 87. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, not, not particularly that night, but the, the damage to the front of the pier was quite horrendous. Um, big concrete slabs, I'm talking about eight by 10 foot, were pushed up wow. by the force of, um, mm -hmm. there was quite a lot of damage and uh, lots of repairs. The, the actual pier structure had been notoriously um, <laughs> under, under the, well, <laughs> under the cosh from the from the North Sea, basically, it's, and, uh, it's like a bit like the Fourth Bridge. You know, it's never never repaired um, totally. There's always something ongoing. Um, it's strange why you built it there and, and why, not yes, not what, at the front. But yeah. I suppose it was because it was a theatre. Yeah, the actual st interior structure was where it was. That's why they used it. I mean. Yeah. It Common sense would place. probably put, tell you to put it at the but front, he, which is where it is now. Or he had his bingo, didn't he? The other side there, the cafe restaurant mm. or whatever. Mm. But it was still a well, big brainchild. Yeah. It was ideal because well, it was the right size. Yeah. Not yeah. too many, t not too big. Yeah. Self contained. It had yeah. windows in it. Could it have windows looking out to the sea? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You could look over and see. Not now. No okay. windows at all, and it's no, just horrible. So there you go. That's another story. How did you end up with a piece of the of the? Bottom? Well, um, two of the guy I met the guy. There's a security chap who's on there overnight, and um, him and his um, sort of sidekick said, "Oh, they're, they're chopping up the or cutting up the lanes. Um, would you like a, a, a bit?" And I said, "Yes." So. Um, that's how I got that. Yeah. Um, I'm surprised you kept it. I would have kept it, but I wouldn't, wouldn't know where to put it. Because well, my wife said it, she'd say it's in the garden. Well, <laughs> it's, I'm not... Nice yeah, coffee table. It would, make yeah. A, it would make a nice table of some sort, but it's too heavy to actually, to hang on, to hang. Yeah. Um, and you see the, the arrows. It weighs a ton. So those cool. arrows are, are there on the, to give, to give you some sort of, something to aim at, because if it's just plain wood, you know, you can sort of, you, you could just, it but it's, it's, guidance. it's a bit of guidance, yes, to, for um, Joe Public, and um, yeah, it's quite, um, I'm quite pleased with that, to be honest. I think it, that, that it was put online, if people wanted a piece of it. You'd probably get, what oh, was it? Um, but I don't know if it's all gone now, um, but here we go. Yeah, they did offer me some of the stuff, but, well, they offered me all these trophies and that. I managed to. Well, get that's why you've got a loft full of. Yeah, uh, get off, but uh, a loft full of like paperwork. a 15 year gap where they seem to have just thrown everything away. Mm. So it just. Well, the bar, the, the bar area was a bit yeah. like this, really. It was all old photographs from when the. All when different the, people, not the same person. No, the when the pier either. first opened, but a lot of those went missing, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. they're, they're the um, 64s, these ones. Mm. Yeah, there's a certain gap somewhere along the line where... <coughs> they were boards up, weren't they? High scores. Yeah. I know you were up there a few times. Yeah, but, um, yeah. yeah um, what's the cheque for? <coughs> £250 to Paul yeah. Scotto and John Mills. That was, well, you see, in 1986. Well, we decided to... We go going to tournaments as well, and we just... Were we teaming up quite regular then? Or was yeah, we did well quite a lot together at Dublin. So uh, that was at Dagenham. Uh, that little trophy there, the green one, that's the spon that's they were the sponsors of the tournament, Bex Veer, which is Bex which, oh, yeah. is a, which is a lager, isn't it? Yeah. I remember yeah. right. Um, uh, we, yeah, we bowled in that. I don't know how many must have been fifty, six might have been a hundred double streams, I don't know. But that was a lot of money in uh, yeah. eighty six, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a fair lot. I think we, we qualified I think it's twelfth. There and we bowled again. It was the top 12 teams to qualify, yeah. and we just scraped in bottom and then we duffed them up. So. Yeah, and then we, <laughs> as the saying goes, we, well, only, we knew what we'd scored, and we were looking around and we saw someone on the next lane. Next. He's, he's only got to get this spare, which is 10 down in two goes. So we were hoping and hoping, and yeah, he, he missed got it. Nine. He missed it, and so we, we sneaked in the back door, so to say. So, 250 pounds, I think. Yeah, I think that's nice all that. But, I mean, we used to go to um, a, a team from Walton. We'd go to the national championships, which would be at the airport bowl in London. Well, it could or, be even in Birmingham, Manchester. And, and two or three tournaments, I can remember, we, we'd clean up. Wow. 
just mm. four, just I five guys from Walton. You know I think you've got an experience of we had like seven or eight years we were bowling away, bowling away, we weren't yeah. doing anything, we were enjoying it, and then all of a sudden we actually clicked it. Yeah, yeah, it we took quite a while. To, at least, so didn't we? we we were always um, taking part, but we were always, always a bit of a side show, yeah. and then all of a sudden we started doing well, and it lasted for quite a few years. Yeah, didn't it, it did. Did going yeah. through the further ones there, the silk cut. Uh, Chris again got us into the silk cut and we won these, this area, then we won the southern area yeah, and we then go we to got the to the national finals and we came, one year was sixth, then fifth, then fourth and we couldn't bowl anymore because that's when silk cut and cigarettes stopped their sponsorship. Right. How many in the team doing that? There's a regular five but you'd have a squad of ten. Who was in the regular? You saw about Garland. I wasn't, I wasn't in that. Robin Gart, Chris Winter, Dan Winter, Terry Bob Hewitt. Clark, Terry Hewitt, myself, um, even Jackie to start with. What's his name? Brian Green. Brian Green. There was about eight of you, wasn't there? Yeah. There was a t you know you, you could pick from. Um, and amazing that when we did that, we had no Paul. I don't know what happened. Yeah, but I like world champion and also Dominic was just. I think he was just too young, but he was still, mm. still class and he didn't have him. So, you did you say Robin Garton? Yeah. yeah. He started that in 64. He, started. he was one of the originals. It's funny enough, someone came up to me the other day and said, oh, do you remember bowling in the booth of Jim Masters at Harrow? And so what we're just talking about, yep. tournaments were either sponsored by cigarettes or, yeah. or alcohol. <laughs> and once those two sponsors became unpopular, they weren't replaced by other sponsors, and so that was another sort of a little bit of a nail in the. Mm. I think that's worldwide in, in bowling now. Mm. You know, they used to play for like in America fifty thousand yeah. dollars every single week. Now it's like you six never six months a year. Yeah, you never saw a top tournament sponsored by Whiskers Cat no. Food, did you? I mean, it just never happened, did it? It was. Mm. But there we go. It was what it was. Yeah, well, we won a lot of money anyway. Yeah. yeah. But it only went to, to to get pay you for next week. Yeah, it was well, sort of we a, had like a key. Which, we did have a bit of a build up. Help with the Goss family. They'd pay for our food, they'd pay for our travel, and we'd have our own key where we'd pay half. And half the. Um, half the lineage and yeah. whatever. And if Tournament entry cost, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And whatever we won, half went back mm. into our little key and half went to the guys. And mm. it, was, it worked well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did. And we still got some money left. To this day, there's day. still a bit left. Yeah. She put it on a ten to one. So <laughs> it comes in. We use it for the next reunion party. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We will. We will use it for the next reunion. Shall I pause it there? Yeah. Do.